This is such a weird angle and I'm having to like... <laughs> Hello guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things. And today I'm going to show you my physical TBR, which is right behind me in these shelves you never get to see because my filming area is over there where my red books go. But I thought I would show you what I have in this wonderful shelf behind me. So there's quite a few books, so let's just get started, shall we? And fair warning, you're not going to see my face for the rest of this video, I think. Well, probably in the outro. <laughs> so let's get started. Alright, so my TBR shelf is actually compromised with two shelves. We have the shelf up here, which is my current monthly TBR, and then these are all the physical books that I have to read. Now, some of them are actually books that are second in the series, and then there are third books that are, like, you know, the continuation of the series, but I haven't gotten to those yet, so these just are all the books that I own that I want to get to. So, let's get started. The first book I have in my physical TBR is actually... My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. This is a book that I already started, but since I haven't finished it, I am considering it a part of my physical TBR. Now we're going to talk about the books that I am reading this month, but that I haven't gotten to. And that starts with Nevermore by Jessica Thompson. Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. The Secret History by Donna Tart and Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. Now we're gonna get to books where I don't know when I'm gonna read them, but that are here. We have The Dead Poet Society. Now I found out that this is actually based on the motion picture written by Tom Schumann, but it's a novel by M.H. Kleinbaum. I thought it was the other way, that the novel came first and then came the movie, but it's still in my physical TBR. Then we have Every Mind's Poetry version of Emily Dickinson's poems. So this is just a selection of Emily Dickinson poems and I've never read Emily Dickinson poetry so I'm really excited to get to this one. Then we have Maurice by E.M. Forrester. The Sign of Four by Arthur Conan Doyle. The Loving Spirit by Daphne du Maurier. The Red Hunt and The Wicker Light both by Mary Watson and The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Then we have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Sedwick, which I am so excited to read. I'm actually thinking about picking this up next month even though I said this was totally a Halloween read, but I'm just so excited to get to it. Then we have Charmed Life by Diana Wynne Jones. I believe that's how you say her name because somebody else said it in another channel. I've been saying Diana Winnie Jones, but I think it's Diana Wynne Jones. Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. Dark Tales by Shirley Jackson. And The Missing Girl by Shirley Jackson. Darkness by John Soule. Dragon's Code by D.G. McCaffrey, and this is part of Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Riders of Pern series, which I believe was continued by her daughter and also by her son once Anne passed away. So I actually read the first chapter of this and was completely taken away by the world, and I can't wait to get to it. Cloud Atlas by Debbie Mitchell. This beautiful edition of Ariel by Sylvia Plath, which is a poetry collection, of course. Then we have The Flowers of Evil by Charles Baudelaire. Now, I have read some of Charles Baudelaire's poetry, but I have never read the complete Flowers of Evil. That's why this is here. And this is the dual text edition. So it's got the French and also the English version, which is really gonna help me read French. Now this book is really special to me. It was gifted to me by my stepdad and it's got a beautiful cover. It's so vintage looking. And this is actually Jaws by Peter Benchley, which is the book that the movie Jaws is based off of. So I'm kind of excited for this, but at the same time, I'm a little bit apprehensive because um, I'm actually terrified of fish. I have a fish phobia. It has 
a scientific name, but I can't remember it. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> then we have, I believe this is Dune Messiah in English, and it's by Frank Herbert. And it's the second book in the Dune series, I believe it is. Then we have The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, which is something that I wanted to get to during Halloween last year and I didn't get the chance to get to it. And I'm kind of saving it for Halloween this year, not gonna lie. The next book I have here is a Choose Your Own Adventure novel by one of my very good friends and Spanish authors, Minerva Gallofre. I'm so sorry there is no translation for this in English, but this is basically an old style choose your own adventure like at the end of the chapter you have choices to make if you choose number one you can go to number page number 47 and if you choose number two then you go to 161 and so on i used to love these when i was a kid so i'm really really excited to get to this one but i haven't for some reason and i've had this actually for a long time then here we have a Christmas present I got, and that is Steel Heart by Brandon Sanderson, which I've heard nothing but good reviews about. <laughs> no, I haven't. Then we have A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. V.E. Schwab wrote... Oh my goodness, my neighbors have decided to use their drill right at this moment. V.E. Schwab wrote one of my favorite books of all time, which is Vicious, but I don't know. I had didn't like that she made it into a trilogy and I don't know how I feel about this one just yet. I'll have to read it and see. Although it does remind me of Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman so maybe it might just be a new favorite. Then we have another Spanish book that I'm sorry doesn't have a translation in English but this is El Gran Juego or The Great Game by Leticia Sanchez Ruiz and this book looks absolutely whimsical and beautiful and it's got kind of Narnia-esque vibes which I really like. Then we have The Wife by Meg Wolitzer which I did try to write but there is one line in the very first page that really turned me off because of a description of a woman in said line so we'll see how it goes. I actually did really want to read this because of the movie with Glenn Close but that line really turned me off. Then we have the Silent Companions by Laura Purcell, which I actually did try to read, but at the time my mental health was not in a place where I should be reading something like this. So um, I hope that now that I'm feeling a lot better, I can get to it soon. Next up, we have Pen Pal by Dathan Alberback, and I actually bought this for a read along with chapter stacks but I didn't get to it at the time so I still have it here in my TBR. Next I have the first three books in Brandon Sanderson's The Mistborn series and they're in a box set and taking them out is gonna be a pain so I'm pretty sure you've all seen them. This is The Final Empire, The Wheel of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages and I actually won this box set in a Twitter giveaway so that's really cool. Then I have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. Oops, sorry about the glare. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't really interested in this book. And then Emmy from Emmy Reads said it was one of her favorite books. And we kind of have similar tastes when it comes to books. So I decided to get it on a whim. So here it is. I don't know when I'm going to get to it. Then we have <laughs> this tiny, 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 tiny novella, which is... The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde and as you know recently I read The Picture of Dorian Gray and I have this that somebody gifted to me and I'm really excited to get to it. This is one of those things where you are tired of reading, of reading long books and you just want something fast, easy and fun so um, I love Oscar Wilde so I can't wait to get to it. And then we have this beautiful graphic novel called This Was Our Pact and this was written and I believe illustrated by Ryan Andrews. 
And then we have witches. James First and the English Witch Hunts <laughs> by Tracy Borman. And this is actually a nonfiction book about the real witch, witch hunts in England during the time of the rule of James the First. And I am so excited to get to this. Recently, I've been getting a lot more into nonfiction books. And this one was recommended by a channel that I will link up in the cards and down below. I can't remember her name, but she's basically one of my favorite uh, YouTubers at the moment. And she reads mostly nonfiction. Then over here, you can't see them, but I have two books by Minerva Gallofre. And that is Lagrimas de Sauce, uh, which translates to Willow Tears, and here we have The Shadow of the Bard. Um, these are books two and three of the Legends of Oniria series, and as you can see, I did get halfway through this one, but I was just not in the mood for fantasy. Oh, and I'm sorry the lighting is doing crazy things right now, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to these again and getting back into this wonderful world. Up next, I have Autonomous by Annalie Newitz. Then I have El Padrino by Mario Puzzo or The Godfather by Mario Puzzo in this really cute RBA editorial and if you saw my unboxing, RBA is actually like a newspaper kind of subscription that brings books out to kiosks and things like that and I just think that that's such a cute thing. So I used to own another book by this subscription service in this same editorial but I lent it to a friend and I never got it back. Then we have Portico by Frederick Poole and then we have another Spanish writer who I consider a friend and that is Jesus Cañadas, Pronto Será de Noche, so Jesus Cañadas, It'll Soon Be Night and this is actually I believe to be historical fiction of a horrible crime that was committed here in Madrid. If you don't know, this bowl is like everywhere in Madrid, so. I also have Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Now, I tried to read this a while ago, but seriously, I was not in the mood for it. So it's still here in my physical TBR. I actually have this on the audiobook, but I have the physical copy, so that's why you're seeing it here. And I have what is technically a reread, and that is The Iliad by the one and only Homer. And while I did read this when I was in school studying art history, this is the version translated by Caroline Alexander, and I'm really excited to read it because it's a female version, not a female version, but a female translation of the work of Homer. And the last book in my physical TBR is The Other People by C.J. Tudor. And that is it! Those are the 50 books in my physical TBR. I will be doing another one of these for my Kindle TBR because actually I have just about as many books in my Kindle which brings me to the point that I think it's time for a book buying ban because getting through these books is going to be a lot and I know that for some people they don't really care how many books they have in their TBR but this is a little bit overwhelming for me especially when you add the Kindle books but yep that is it for this video thank you so much for coming back to my channel and thank you for watching if you're new don't forget to like and subscribe i post videos every monday wednesdays and fridays and then sometimes you get a little bit of an extra video if i'm feeling extra saucy that time so that's it for me and i will see you next time bye guys mm.